going on guys uh it's been about two and a half years since i polished this beast and the paint is trashed it's super dull scratched up it's got water spots all over it so today i'm gonna try to tackle as much as i can i've got a whole saturday and along the way i'm gonna show you exactly what i'm using i'm gonna show you how to do it I'm gonna tell you what works and what doesn't work and how to take it easy on this single stage paint because you can burn through this stuff and uh, hopefully I won't do that. That would be a uh, what not to do video then. Let's try not to do that. So let's get into it. All right, while I'm working over there, I'm gonna show you guys what we're using. So uh, I just got a smaller bucket. I like to use these smaller buckets, they're easy to move around. And then we're gonna use Dawn dish soap. And this is going to remove any old waxes or dirt or anything else you have. Never use this just washing, uh, just for like a maintenance wash. It's going to remove waxes, it's going to un unprotect your paint, take the protection off of your paint. And um, But that's what we want today because we're going to be polishing and adding a wax or seal. We are also using a boar's hair brush. Uh, yeah, it's a brush. Brushes do scratch paint. Again, we're gonna be polishing, so not a huge deal. And this is, this was really expensive. It's made to not scratch up paint. Uh, I will say it still does a little bit, but not as bad as your typical plastic style brush. Just so you know, leaf blowers work way better on a vehicle. On an RV, it just seems like you're blowing water all around, not getting it off the panel. So I decided to let it air dry while I took care of some yard work. Back to work. We're going to use the old trusty six inch Harbor Freight polisher. It's a Chicago electric. Very, 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 very nice. But along with the polisher, we're going to be using 3D Speed. This is an all-in-one. It has a polish and a sealant. And uh, also, we're going to be using polishing pads. These are Lake Country hybrid pads, I believe. HDOs, I'm not sure. There's something like that. Since I only had one full day, I had to finish the rest of the trailer all during the week when I got off work. And uh, it, it took all week completely. But I got it done. and. Uh, when you're doing something like that, when you're having to go back and work on it a day or two later, you're gonna wanna rinse it off again. So I just used Optimum No Rinse. It's a rinseless wash. I mix it in a garden sprayer like this. I spray the panels. Then I would wipe the uh, panels off with a microfiber cloth and then wipe it down again with a dry cloth to try to dry it off. Then I got started with polishing and as you can see, I'm using a crosshatch method. And for me, one pass is going up and down, side to side, and that's one pass. Uh, when I was using the 3D speed, I was trying to do two passes, and basically you're gonna have to fill it out. Uh, doing one pass is your safest bet. You're taking less off the paint, but because this is a fine polish, you're really not taking a lot off anyway. So you don't have a whole lot to worry about there. But uh, the more you, more passes you make, the more imperfections you remove, the better it's gonna look. But you're also removing paint and that eventually you could get down to, I guess, the bare aluminum. So what I found was doing two passes in most spots was working great for me. Uh, I did get to one part on this side of the trailer you see here where I was only doing one pass. And that was working well because I had uh, experimented with some polishes last year on that one section. So I didn't have to do as much to get it looking nice. And um, it worked out. 
want to use four pea sized drops. That's what they say, pea size. What kind of pea? I don't know. Uh, anyway, but you'll see it here. This is how much I use every time. Uh, when you first start with a clean pad, I always put a little more. It's called priming the pad. You want to add a little more polish to it. Uh, then you'll go to your four drops and uh, that's what you use the rest of the time. While you're polishing, you're going to want to keep your pads clean. I used this brush for a while, but as you can see, it got gunked up pretty quickly. Uh, basically, I turned the polisher on a lower speed, run the brush across, kind of scrub it while it's spinning, and uh, it removes quite a bit of gunk, and it helps clean the pad. Uh, my favorite way to clean the pad is with compressed air. I'll show you that here. You just basically uh, blow against the pad, and that'll blow a lot of the old polish and paint particles and dirt and whatever else is gunked up in that pad, it'll blow it out and you can start fresh again. Uh, if you are polishing and you start noticing streaking or things like that, then your pad is too dirty, you need to clean it out. I have another polisher with three inch pads on it and I use these for the spots that I couldn't get the six inch pad in. Also the awning arms, uh, gotta be real care careful with those. It really shakes them pretty bad. So, uh, you know, just try to be easy with that. And then I also uh, polished the outside mini split unit and all of that turned out great. And really the polishing method is no different with the smaller pads as the larger. So next up are wheels and tires. Uh, disregard this beat up wheel. That's just how it looks. Uh, for the tire, I'm using Tough Shine Tire Cleaner. This stuff is amazing. Best tire cleaner I've ever used. Works really well. And then for the wheel, I'm using Optimum Power Clean. Uh, this is a great all-purpose cleaner. You can use it all over the place for different things, uh, but for wheels and, and things like that, it is just unbeatable. I use Solution Finish for all the faded out trim on the trailer, and this stuff is very expensive. As you can see, it's a small bottle, but it works really well. It's really nice. Uh, also I use this microfiber polishing pad. Just put one little dab on there and it'll cover everything on the trailer. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. The last step we're gonna take is protecting the power cord. Uh, it lays out in the sun nonstop and this 303 protectant has uh, UV blockers that really help it out. It conditions it, just makes it look brand new and it protects it. Well, uh, you may think I'm nuts for doing all that work, but it sure paid off because our trailer looks amazing. Uh, we did take it camping and it looked good all weekend. It was freezing cold, so I couldn't go outside and look at it a lot, but that's okay. Uh, if you wanna try all this stuff, I've got links to all the products below. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know if you learned something. And if you have any other tips that you like to use to protect your camper, I'd love to hear them. So uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and we'll catch you guys next time.